everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> so um, we moved to West Virginia about 30 years ago. And let me tell you, things have changed quite a bit since then. We first lived in Berkeley Springs and our mail was delivered by a lady in an old pickup truck. Today, um, it's, of course, it's all official uh, vehicles, uniform, post delivery folks. But you know, uh, there are some things unique to this area that you might want to know. Um, cut down on those outsider vibes. <laughs> so uh, stay tuned for some insider tips. And by the way, our contact information is below. And if you're interested in learning about the Eastern Panhandle, consider subscribing. You can also uh, download our relocation guide link up there in the top corner. <laughs> so first thing, how to say things like a non-outsider. The number one giveaway that you're new here is how you pronounce certain geographic areas, like how you say um, Appalachia, which is probably how you're prone to say it. I'm, that's, I'm still guilty of this one. But the proper local pronunciation, I'm told, is Appalachia with a soft A, not Appalachia with a hard A. And there's three areas in the Eastern Panhandle that you'll probably uh, be corrected uh, for mispronouncing. Jarrettstown, Carnesville, and Great Cacapon. Jarrettstown is a community in South Berkeley County. It's west of 81. So on that one, you emphasize the first syllable, not the second. So it's Jarrettstown, not Gerardstown. Carnesville, uh, that's a community midway between Martinsburg and Charlestown. And it can be tricky, but it's Carnesville, not Gurneysville. And the one that everybody not from here uh, gets wrong, Kakapan. It's Kakapan, not Kakapan. And you see Kakapan uh, a lot. There's uh, Kakapan State Park, the Kakapan River, uh, Great Kakapan, that's a mountainous area just west of Berkeley Springs. So now you know. <laughs> Next thing, the weather. West Virginia has four definite seasons. And allergies uh, can be pretty bad, especially in the fall and spring. So make sure you have your allergy medication handy. In winter, be prepared for it to be cold and icy. I learned that the hard way when I uh, first moved up north from Texas. If you don't have a garage, waking up to a car covered in ice with only a spatula to deal with it is not fun, which is um, what I had on hand. <laughs> so get your winter gear ready. Also, uh, there's more cloudy days here than in most places in the country. It rains more than a lot of places. Personally, I like that. But if you're someone who craves lots and lots of sunshine, West Virginia uh, may not be your ideal spot. Number three, traffic. For the most part, traffic here is pretty good. Much less congestion than in places like Washington, DC. But there are a few spots you uh, should know about. First up, the Commons at Martinsburg. If you live in Berkeley County or anywhere really in the Eastern Panhandle, you'll probably end up at some point visiting one of the stores in there. Target, uh, TJ Maxx, Ulta, Aldi Grocers, several other really good stores. The problem with that shopping center is that it has one entry and one exit off Apple Harvest Road. And during peak times like Christmas, it can be a real pain trying to get in and out of there. Also, um, it's right next to uh, 81 and the exit off 81. Plus, there's lots of other stores all around that exit. But I've got a nice little tip for you when things are really bad. Right behind the Commons is an apartment complex and there's a road back there that connects that complex to the back of the Commons and takes you to Apple Harvest Road, the same road that the main entry and exit takes you to. Also, um, to avoid the 81 traffic, instead of turning right on Apple Harvest, you can uh, go left. Head down to Clee Road, turn right, and after a few turns, you'll be on King Street, where you can get on 81 lots easier. It's a less direct route to 81, but it may uh, save your last nerve when that exit at the Commons gets all backed up. Another uh, traffic warning is in Inwood and their roundabout overkill. The Inwood exit off 81 Route 51 is itself a roundabout. And then as you proceed down 51, there's five more right next to each other. 
if you are on the inside lane and traffic is heavy, you could end up like this, especially if you aren't sure. I know. I can't seem to get over to the left, honey. I'll try next time. It's amazing. I cannot get left. <laughs> so best way to navigate a roundabout is to stay uh, on the outside lane. So if you see the exit you need at the last minute, you have a better chance of success. And uh, people do tell me that traffic does move more smoothly along 51 now that they place those roundabouts. And roundabouts do get easier to maneuver as you uh, become more familiar where you want what exit you need to take. If you need to, uh, if you want to avoid it altogether, Route 11 runs from Martinsburg south to the Virginia line and passes through Inwood. So that's an option. Other, the other heads up traffic tip is Route 9. That road can be an easy drive or a headache, depending on the time of day. It's a headache during rush hours, that's early morning or around 5 p.m., and when school lets out, and that's typically around 3 p.m. But there is an alternative route that not only by, uh, bypasses the traffic, but also uh, treats you uh, to some breathtaking scenery, Dry Run Road. It's a fairly steep a road that ascends North Mountain to the tip with a sharp switchback heading down, and the descent leads you to Back Creek Valley Road in Hedgesville. So take your pick, heavy traffic on a flat road, or virtually no traffic on a picturesque mountain road <laughs> with twists and turns, and if you look over the side, a steep drop off that you would not want to navigate. Number four, deer season and cultural observations. So this is something important uh, to the culture up here, deer season, that's November and December. And uh, depending on where you live, if you need a plumber, electrician, something during deer hunting season, at least the first few days of the season, uh, you might be out of luck. Schools even let out in certain parts of West Virginia for deer season, so uh, heads up on that. And then uh, the last thing, personal property tax. You'll pay a personal property tax bill on your car or vehicle. And that's fairly unique to West Virginia. Not every state does it. It's not much, uh, but be aware it's a thing. Taxes overall, uh, though, are pretty cheap here. So <laughs> those are some things to be aware of if you're moving to West Virginia. And don't worry if you mispronounce some things. People here are very gracious. So embrace the uniqueness of West Virginia and you'll love it. The video on the right is about uh, some myths people have about West Virginia and the reality today. Okay, <laughs> thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.